Welcome to this level 5 IT guide on Windows Server 2008. In this session we're going to install Windows Server 2008 Standard Edition full installation which is the graphical interface rather than the core installation. Okay we're going to install Windows Server 2008 and in this example I'm going to walk through doing a standard graphical install as opposed to the core installation. I don't know what else to call the regular normal graphical type of windows other than the, the graphical windows so I apologize if I refer to it in a way that drives people crazy but um, there's standard which is actually standard data center and enterprise and there's also standard data center and enterprise in core installation and core installation I'll cover in a different session but essentially it installs it with a minimal graphical interface mostly command line so um, anyways let's get started so I went ahead and I booted up from the media and it goes through a loading Windows files progress bar that's in black and then it jumps right to this and it comes up and it asks me for what language I want to use, uh, time and currency format, uh, keyboard layout method, and um, that's pretty much it for that screen. Click next. Then I have some uh, options here. I can go ahead and install now. But just so you know, there's also a what to know before installing Windows. It's got some useful information you should look at if you have any curiosity about it. And also the repair wizard is also linked off of this dialog. If you're booting this off of a um, or on a machine that already has Windows Server 2008 that's having problems, this is how you would get back to it. So you'd start with a disk or some bootable media of some sort. And when you get to this dialog, you'd click on repair your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and click on install now. This will take a second. And as it says, please wait. Okay, comes up with a menu with six options, but if you look closely, it's actually a repeat of three options. So I'm going to minimize this column here so I can stretch it over a little bit. And as you can see here, I've got standard enterprise and data center full installation. You notice that it says without Hyper-V. This release I'm using now is the RTM release, but it's before Hyper-V has been released. So right now as I'm recording this, Hyper-V is at release candidate one stage. So I'm not, I don't have anything to show you for that. The second set of three is a repeat of standard enterprise and data center, but you notice it says server core installation instead of full installation. So what I was referring to as the graphical installation, I guess should be called full installation, but oh well, sue me. Click next. I get the license agreement. If you want to, you can read all this. If you really have trouble sleeping, it's a great thing to read. Then click I accept the license terms if you do, and click next. Now if there was a previous operating system on here I would get this option to upgrade but since I'm installing on a clean setup I don't have that option I have custom only and there's a help link here for help me decide and it tells me that upgrade has been disabled so I'm just going to go ahead and click on custom and you can see I'm in the first stage of the setup there's two stages down here at the bottom is collecting information is stage one installing windows is stage two and, and as you can see it it's the bulk of the time that it takes to install it. Okay, so it comes up and asks me where do I want to install Windows, and it shows me my disk partition setup here. It's not all that much unlike what you see with Vista. So it's if you're familiar with installing Vista, this will look pretty familiar. I have refresh, I have load driver in case I'm going to load a driver, and I have drive options. Now if I click on drive options, I get the option to delete the partition, format it, extend it, or create a new one. You notice here I have uh, disk zero is unallocated space. So it's basically an unformatted partition. There's nothing really there. So if I just click next, it'll go ahead and create a new one using that space and go ahead and format it. So when I click next, it's going to jump ahead, grab that full space, and start copying files. And you'll see here that the steps that it's going to take are copying the files, which are in compressed format, just like in Vista. Then it expands them, and then it installs them, and then it installs updates, and then it completes it by going through some post-configuration things. So I'm going to go ahead and pause right here and come back after this step is done because these five steps can take quite a while.
finished installing and now it's going to actually do a reboot. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, after the reboot, now it's uh, comes back to a black window that says, please wait. And uh, we just have to kind of wait. And again, these steps may not take nearly this long if you're actually installing this on what I would consider a server grade hardware platform. So don't think that because you're looking at this demo that this is what you can expect on a real server. On most real servers, this setup is blindingly fast. So I'm doing this in VMware on a laptop that has four gigabytes of RAM. It's fairly speedy, but just to keep things realistic and in perspective, be aware that it's not going to be like this on a real server. Okay, just like it says uh, during the setup that it will reboot several times. In this case, it did reboot twice. Then it comes back up and it goes through a few iterations. And then you get to the screen where it tells you that your initial password must be changed, which is a nice feature. Um, and again, this is implying that you are logged in as the administrator. So just so you know that that's what it's implying. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to set a password. And then I'm going to confirm the password. And then click the arrow. It's very easy to reach down here and click the cancel button, by the way, because it looks like a button. A lot of people reach down and click that by mistake, but you need to click the arrow button. Or just hit enter. It actually accepts that. And it tells you that the password's been changed. I'll click OK. And I'll get some status as it's loading up the initial desktop. And just so you know, this process is the same from... The part I started on the installation until right here is about the same as installing the core installation. The only difference is when I actually fire up the first desktop session or when it actually logs in. I get a slightly different desktop on the core installation. It'll look like this, but there won't be any recycle bin. There'll just be a DOS or command shell window sitting there staring at me. So that's the major difference right there. Okay, I cover this in another session, but Essentially, as soon as you do the installation, it pops up and it goes right into the post-installation configuration, which it calls Initial con uh, Configuration Task, or ICT. And in here, I have uh, basically three groups of settings that I can change. And I cover these in another session, as I said. But time zone, networking, and computer name and domain are all underneath computer information. And then under Update the Server, you have your automatic feedback and download and install updates. And believe it or not, this has only been RTM'd for a, maybe a month, and there's already some updates out for Windows Server 08. So by the time you're watching this, there could be quite a few more. Then the third section is Customize the Server. We can add roles, features, enable remote desktop, and configure the Windows Firewall. Now if you do accidentally check this, and you need to get back to it at some point in the future, there is a way to do it, and I do discuss that in another session. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell, how you do the Windows Server setup for Windows Server 2008. Thank you for watching this uh, Level 5 IT guide. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this.